Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl released recently, and as happens with any new Pokemon game, there's been a lot of focus on the starter Pokemon. Uh, I've seen some people shiny hunting, which, uh, good luck to them, it seems pretty tedious. And another aspect of that is that a lot of people want to learn how to use the starter Pokemon competitively. There is no in-game ladder within Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but if you want to battle your friends, that's totally doable, and in addition to that, I think it is confirmed at this point that you will eventually be able to transfer these Pokemon over to Sword and Shield. So I thought it could be fun to kind of go through and share some of the builds that I would first look at um, testing out with regards to using these starter Pokemon. And we're going to go in order of Infernape, then Empoleon, and then Torterra slash Grottle, which we'll save for last. So yeah, this is the first Infernape set. I think when you're looking at how to use a Pokemon, you want to look at what it does well. Infernape is really fast, especially for a Gen 4 meta, and it actually is relatively strong as well. And what's interesting is that its offenses aren't super high, 104 is nothing to write home about, but it has really high base power moves in close combat and overheat. This is kind of your standard, like, this is kind of what I imagine the standard Infernape will look like. Focus Ash allows it to be basically pretty fast and frail. Uh, you don't need to invest in your bulk with Focus Ash because you're always taking at least two hits anyway, uh, so that's good. And then you have access to close combat and overheat, which are moves with high drawbacks and that close combat will lower your defenses, overheat will lower your offenses, but since you are not planning on sticking around for a while anyway, you can kind of abuse these higher impact moves. Um, Infernape is also a Pokemon that puts on a lot of pressure. Fake Out is one of the one of the best things that it does, Fake Out being one of the most powerful moves in competitive Pokemon, um, just because it allows you to control the board and reposition and stuff like that. And so for the fourth slot, I've chosen to give it Encore. The reason for that is because if the opponent protects in front of Infernape or if they make a weird move or if you switch Infernape, you're normally not gonna switch Infernape in, but in the situation that you are, if they've like locked themselves into something weird, you can click Encore. That's primarily to stop Protect though, as people are going to want to protect in front of Infernape on the first turn because of Fake Out, and then you'll have access to Encore to trap them, or to force them to continue to use Protect, which is really valuable. So, yeah, I think uh, in terms of the EVs, I just gave this thing max speed because you're not investing in bulk anyway, and then you can choose between investing max in your attack or max in your special attack or mixing it up. I do think you should be maxing one of them out, and I chose for my physical attack because I think close combat is a little bit more clickable and overheat a lot of the time, but it's kind of personal preference. It depends also on what your friends are using and stuff like that. The next set is a little bit different. Uh, this is a choice band set with Iron Fist. Um, it's taking advantage of Infernape's high natural base speed and decent base attack, which allows it to outspeed a lot of Pokemon in the format and then click a really strong close combat. Uh, Iron Fist does not boost close combat, but it does boost Thunder Punch. That's why it's Blaze in the first set, Iron Fist in the second. But yeah, this Infernape actually, uh, it has access to U-Turn, which is actually a really good move um, for choice sets because if it is in a strong position, you can click the move that is the strongest. And if it's not in a strong position, you can just U-Turn out and get some damage off there. and scout your opponent out so yeah with this set i mean it's just max speed max attack nothing fancy with the evs there um you want it to be as fast as possible outspeed other pokemon and then you want it to do as much damage as possible i do think that this set is a little bit more volatile it's kind of similar to urshifu where with focus sash you should be able to get you know you can always survive at least one attack if not more and choice band set you're going to be doing way more damage but you are more vulnerable on the defensive side as well so it all is kind of depending on personal preference and team style and stuff like that but um, yeah this is how i'd probably approach a choice band infernape and then the last one's kind of fun i don't know how good this one actually is but this is actually a supportive infernape set uh, i built this specifically to beat garchomp basically you can take a burned earthquake through shukaberry and another burned earthquake and still survive so yeah this is intended to take advantage of infernape's high natural speed stat and good supporting move pool so helping hand is really good i initially had to protect but i figured helping hand might actually be better since infernape is often going to be the target of fake outs and stuff will o wisp is there because will o wisp is a really good support move if it hits uh, you can burn a lot of physical you can burn every you know almost every physical attacker can be burned and a burned physical attacker is just a huge weakness and then slack off obviously for recovery uh this set is like definitely the wonkiest of the three of them i'm not sure how good it actually is but i think it's pretty like interesting and fun and i always kind of wanted to make support in for an ape work so yeah so that's that's kind of where the inspiration for this one comes from Next up is Empoleon. So Empoleon is probably, it's kind of hard to say if it's better than Infernape, but it, it's definitely, a, it's a different role for sure. Empoleon is good in part because its typing is really good. It's got phenomenal defensive typing. The issue is that uh, some of its stats aren't great. I mean, it actually has higher offenses than Infernape, but unlike Infernape, it doesn't have access to those really huge, high accuracy, high power moves. Uh, so it has to use a weaker move pool, which makes it feel weaker a lot of the time. The advantage of Empoleon is that it's a fair bit bulkier and obviously with good defensive typing, that goes a long way. So yeah, this is kind of why I envisioned the standard Empoleon set will be protect ice beam scald and grass knot you can try and flip, fit flash cannon on this set but the issue with running no grass knot is that you get really hard walled by uh, opposing water types and water types are pretty good so you typically prefer to have a move to hit them this is just like a standard bulky water type the reason we're running shukaberry is because uh one of the drawbacks of being steel types although there aren't many drawbacks of being steel types but one of them is you do gain that ground weakness and as a water type you typically want to use your water type with ice beam to beat ground pokemon so yeah for that reason i've given it shukaberry to allow it to survive hopefully an earthquake it's you should always 
to survive an earthquake with this. Like, this Empoleon is just good because it's really hard to switch into it. Like I said earlier, physical attackers really don't like being burned, so having Scald as a primary stab move is definitely really solid. And then on top of that, even if they, they have something that resists water, like Dragon or, you know, opposing water types, you have Ice Beam for Dragon to Grass Mount for opposing water types. So really good move coverage, hard to hit for super effective damage. I know it's weak to grounded fighting. And electric i think those are its only weaknesses so if you can resist those weaknesses you're going to be in a really good spot and even if they have a ground weakness you might be able to trade big damage for big damage thanks to the shuka berry next up we have life orb empoleon so i chose to run no ice beam on this set because since you're life orb and pretty slow i've given it a few EVs in speed to hopefully outspeed other things around the speed tier but because you're pretty slow anyway like against pokemon like garchomp you're not going to be out speeding and using ice beam anyway so i actually thought that in this specific case it might be okay to drop ice beam for flash cannon yeah this set is a little bit more volatile kind of like our second infernape set it trades a little bit more damage for a little bit less survivability so i guess it's it's you know the life orb takes a bit of your health but it's not a huge deal most of the time but the no shuka berry might be a big deal depending on how many ground types you're going up against this basically it just means you, you shouldn't be using this thing versus ground types at all which is totally fine because um as yeah it's, it's weak to it anyway so yeah so in exchange for losing your shuka berry you do get life orb which you know empoleon special attack is actually not bad like 111 isn't terrible especially when you can run a boosting nature this empoleon might two shot some things but i think this one probably will two shot if not one shot a lot of pokemon Come on, basically two shot if it resists, one shot if it doesn't resist. So if you can give this thing the proper support, be it speed control, redirection, fake out, stuff like that, I think it can do some really big damage. Last but not least is this Empoleon set. I've always liked this Defiant Empoleon, but it's, Empoleon just doesn't have the offensive stats to really make use of Defiant. But in theory, it's really cool. You have Defiant and you have Priority Move, and Water and Steel, again, is cool typing. I've chosen to use Protect, Waterfall, Aqua Jet, and Steel Wing with this set. The issue with Empoleon is that the way that Defiant works is that if any of your stats are lowered, you get a plus two boost. This is most commonly seen in the form of Intimidate, where um, your opponent will intimidate you, and then Defiant will activate, and you'll end up with net plus one. But even a plus one attack, your attacks aren't doing a ton of damage. And so, yeah, it's not like, it's definitely not the strongest set, but it is, it's really cool in my opinion. A Defiant Pokemon with this typing is, you know, really interesting. And I do wish it was a bit better, but you can see even with max attack and a boosting nature only at 151, which like compare that to Infernape, who is at 156 without a boosting nature. And Infernape doesn't even have that high of an attack stat. So yeah, this set is a little bit unfortunate. The other thing about a physical Empoleon that's unfortunate is your best steel move is Steel Wing, which 90% accuracy is really bad, to be honest. It's a move that's going to miss when you need it sometimes and so yeah but i do think that like defiant plus empoleon is a really cool idea in theory i just think that in practice it doesn't really i don't think you can get much better than this maybe you drop steel wing for ice punch but then yeah like it's it's always gonna be messy i think but i like this i really like this idea in theory so um i'm putting it here our last starter pokemon is torterra torterra is Definitely the worst of the three, but definitely has some stuff it can do. Its hidden ability is Shell Armor, which is super nice because it means it can't get crit. Um, it has really high natural base. Well, actually, I thought it had higher, actually. Its base stat, its bulk is fine. Like, it has pretty good HP, it has good defense, and then, like, pretty decent special defense. So it's not bad at all. This set, I figured, would probably just be, like, a really slow, bulky attacker that also offers a little bit of support in the form of Wide Guard. You could also use this in Trick Room, and you could just, you know, drop this down to zero and run Brave Nature instead. Wood Hammer is really high base power move. It does have recoil, but I think the recoil is worth it on a Pokemon like Torterra, especially because it has high base HP. I've opted to give it Yachi Berry because this combination is weak to ice, obviously. Four times weakness to ice is kind of significant, so like a lot of Pokemon learn ice coverage moves, so I didn't want to get caught off guard with regards to ice moves, so I gave it Yachi Berry. Just max HP, max attack, nothing nothing crazy here. Yeah, I think that's actually pretty much all I have to say about this. I mean, you don't have to run Earthquake, but I, I think the other ground moves it gets aren't phenomenal. I like it. Let me check if it gets Stomping Tantrum. Yeah, it, it's other ground moves are pretty, like its ground move pool is actually pretty limited, so Earthquake is definitely the best bet here. I mean, Torterra basically, it's fine. If it were really fast, it'd be a lot better, but this low base speed really holds it back um and it's not so strong like none of these sinner starters have super high attack stats so attack or special attack stats i should say so i think sometimes it can get stuck being slower than opponents and if you're going to be slower you really want to be making a big impact and i just don't think it has the offenses to do that so yeah this is a bit more of an annoying set taking advantage of torterra's natural bulk rather than its decent offensive stats with this set the idea is to stick around use protect leech seed synthesis and wood hammer to just really be a thorn in your opponent's side the idea here is that you always have wood hammer as like a solid offensive option this is kind of similar to how some people were in tapu bulu back in 2017 where the idea is leech seed your opponent get synthesis off we use leftovers plus leech seed for recovery um you can also drop this for curse if you want or stockpile both are also pretty good options this might even be better uh than synthesis but i thought synthesis was more consistent to give you like that guarantee guaranteed recovery uh but this set is is you're you're dropping the yachi berry because basically you're saying all right i don't want to fight against ice type pokemon that's one of the reasons i actually gave it synthesis that you can be like when you have stockpile you're like less likely you don't want to switch out as much switching out is like a little bit less beneficial because obviously you give up your boosts but with synthesis you're not like you're just putting leechy down and then you can switch out and the leechy still stays in play so yeah i think that if this is if you can get this Terra against pokemon that like don't have ways to hit it for super effective i think it could definitely just like win games but that's often difficult to do. It's kind of like, this is kind of like a worse version of Ferrothorn with slightly 
slightly better offense with Woodhammer. Woodhammer is also really good here because the leftovers and leech seed and synthesis recovery, so you can use it with a little bit more recklessness. Um, the very last set I want to talk about is one that I think a lot of people are going to be surprised by, but there was actually a theory back in 2015, I think, that Grottle was really good. It was, it was, and that was like a metagame with like Landorus T, Mega Kangaskhan. I might be getting the year wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was 2015. And basically the theory is that Grottle is actually a pretty bulky grass type Pokemon with like decent moves. As you can see here, I guess Leech Seed Synthesis and Stockpile into like a couple other like pretty interesting moves with uh, actually a pretty high natural base HP. And with Eviolite, these defenses are both actually really significant because they're 1.5 times higher. So you're talking like upwards of 100 and what is this, 188 or 189 physical defense stat. And even, on the, you know, with, even with these EVs, you still get another 52, 54 points. So 100, it's like 100 and, what did I say? 169 here, 100, or 189 here, um, and then 154 is 162, I think, if I'm, if I'm doing math correctly, who knows? With 182 base HP and grass type is really good. Um, that's certain things. Like obviously you get a fair few weaknesses in like fire, ice, bug, flying, etc but being able to resist ground and electric uh are pretty significant as well as opposing grass types so yeah so grottle actually i do i do need to tell you that ev light is not in brilliant diamond shining pearl you can see here i've set the rule set to bdsp and it's not legal but when this comes to sword and shield i mean if you think about the pokemon that are really strong right now regilecki you know urshifu rapid strike rillaboom none of those pokemon really want to deal with grottle and none of them have quick ways of damaging it so you can easily send grottle in get a stockpile up and then start being pretty annoying with synthesis leech seed etc you can make an argument that you don't even need stockpile that you'd rather have protect or you know there's obviously like room to switch things around uh grottle does not get wood hammer but i think it's okay because its offenses aren't so oh this should be i have it as i wish this should be bold yeah i mean its offenses are pretty bad you probably should based on the basis you probably should be running a physical attack so i'd have to revisit that i don't think it gets anything much better than, i think giga Drain is the best move even though it's not yeah maybe it's just seed bomb i don't know this is probably actually correct um but yeah i mean it's, it's a super bulky grass type pokemon that like has really annoying support moves and also can run eviolite so I think it's probably like pretty difficult for a lot of people to deal with. Um, again, you can't really use this in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl because of the EV light or the fact that there is no EV light in the game, unfortunately. But in theory, it's actually a pretty like funny Pokemon. And it's actually like Grottle's probably like has, if you were to bring one of these Pokemon, one of these sets to a tournament in Sword and Shield, Grottle probably has like one of the highest expected values, funnily enough, because I think it's like has like some of the highest potential. So if you're interested in it, feel free to try it out once you can transfer Pokemon to a Sword and Shield. But that's all for me. Let me know if you enjoyed the video and if there's anything else you want to see me cover for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Um, it's me. <laughs> World chip difference, baby.